Good morning. This is September the 12th, this Monday morning, and I'm so glad you're with me on Morning Minor. I have a message, but listen to the song the Lord gave me years ago. It goes like this. Oh, his name is wonderful. Almighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, I know my new well. I never thought that true love would be Knowing Jesus Christ personally His name is Jesus Christ He's King of King and Lord and Lord Stay with me, I have a message from the Lord for you. Good morning, this is Mark Millett coming to you from out in Bucharest, Romania. We're still out in our courtyard this morning. It's still early in the morning, and you hear the birds singing. The reason we do that is a little bit cooler outside. But listen to this song I just sung that's called His Name is Wonderful. Now, when I say by that, the scripture goes like this. In, in Isaiah chapter 9, in verse 6, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Now, he's not talking about Barack Obama, and he's not talking about Donald Trump. Um, you know, I thought about today, yesterday, about how great it is to be a born-again believer. No matter what happens, amen, we're going to come out okay. I never forget a time I read about that story about Noah and the ark and how that Noah was crying out for, for to, to repent, to come back to God, to get in the boat, get on the ship with them. The animals had enough sense where God put it in their hearts to, to come, and they got in. A lot of the people, and they had religion in that day. The history tells us that we've always had some kind of religion going on. You remember when they came out of Egypt, or the Egyptians had their gods the sun god, Baal, and, and they had all these other gods. And, and even when Noah was in the ark and he was crying out, he preached for, the Bible said for 120 years, he was a, a man of righteousness. And I believe he was preaching, repent, get turned from your sins and turn to God, come back to God. But only eight souls were on that ship that day. I don't know how many are going to heaven. That's not my business. My business is to go get all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And I love so much bringing you these five-minute thoughts in the mornings before you go to work or wherever you're at this morning on this 12th day of uh, Monday of uh, September. And you know what? The Bible tells us you're either in Christ or you're out of Christ. There's no but thing about half and half. You know, I'm, well, I'm a half a Christian. Half, no, you're not. You're not. There's not a half a baby. You're either born or you're not born. You're dead. And the Bible says that we were all born dead. You said, Brother Martin, does the Bible teach us? Absolutely, in Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible said, and you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. You see, when our great, 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 great granddaddy, amen, named Adam, sinned, death and sin passed upon all men, and immediately when he ate that fruit, he died spiritually. Now, I know he lived to be a 930 years after that. He lived to be that old, 930 years. But the Bible says that we all died in Christ. I mean, I died in our first Adam. Now, the last Adam, which is Christ, is the one that brought life. He's, he gave life. The first Adam was a living was a soul, but the last Adam was a living spirit. The first Adam was a soul. The last that was a living spirit. So Jesus comes and he lives in here. The Bible says in Christ and you being in Christ and Christ being in you. Now, where are you today? You say, Brother Martin, I'm in the church. I'm a preacher and I'm this and that. Listen, but are you in Christ? That's the main thing I want to ask. Are you in Christ? Is he living in here? Have you talked to him this morning? If I was living in your house, would you know I'd be in there? Well, if I hope, I think, I hope, I think, I hope so. No, you know whether I was in there or wasn't in there, amen? Now, do you have conversation? If I lived in your house, in one of your rooms, would I be living in your house and you not speak to me at all, not talk to me, not ask me? Or would you give me all the keys and say, here, Brother Martin, here, you rule everything. That's the way it is with Christ. His desire is to live his life 
unhinderedly, freely, with liberty through you. I heard yesterday about a man who became the president of the Southern Baptist. I wrote him a little letter. I said, I trust with all my heart that Jesus Christ the Lord would bless you and have the liberty, the liberty to live his life without being restricted by all your, the religious. But, but he'd have his liberty to live his life through you. This is the president of the Southern Baptist Association. Just got elected. I wrote him a nice little letter. And, uh, and I told him, I said, my hope is for that you let Jesus Christ live his life through you. I try to encourage him, amen? You see, there's many people in different religions, they never met the Lord. Religious, yes. Do they know the Bible? Yes. They know the Greek, the Hebrew, but they don't know the, the little Nazarene who walked on the seas of Gal beside the Sea of Galilee, amen? You need to know the Lord Jesus. I don't care what school you've been to. I have a doctor's degree. If you want to see it, I'll bring it out here and show it to you. It's hanging on the wall in there. What do you do with it? I'll let it collect dust, amen? It doesn't do you any good unless you have Jesus Christ in your heart. And you're in Christ, and he's in you. Are you in Christ today? In Jesus' name, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.